Stop letting others control you. Master the art of not reacting. Introduction. Awakening the divine within. In every heart lies the seed of divinity, a spark of the infinite source from which all things are born. This book is an invitation to awaken that spark, to rediscover the profound truth that you are a creator, capable of shaping your reality through belief. The wisdom held within these pages draws from the ancient mystical traditions of Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermetic philosophy, all of which teach that the power to manifest lies within us. In learning to master the art of belief, you will learn to command the forces of creation, aligning your thoughts, emotions, and actions with the highest realms of possibility. This journey begins with the understanding that reality, as we perceive it, is shaped by the mind. Esoteric teachings such as the Hermetic principle of mentalism, the idea that all is mind, reveal that the universe itself is a mental construct, and that by mastering our inner world, we can transform our outer world. In Gnostic thought, the concept of Gnosis, inner knowledge of the divine, is the key to liberation, breaking free from the illusions of the material world and stepping into the realization of our own creative power. Throughout this book, we will delve into the mysteries of the self, the cosmos, and the subtle energies that govern both. Each chapter will guide you deeper into the understanding that belief is not passive. It is a dynamic force, a living energy that, when harnessed, can bring about the manifestation of your deepest desires. This is not simply about positive thinking or wishful dreaming. This is about tapping into the ancient, occult principles that have been known and practiced by mystics for millennia. By doing so, you will learn to navigate both the visible and invisible realms transforming your dreams into reality. As we embark on this journey, it is important to recognize that the path to manifestation begins within. The power of belief is not something that exists outside of you, it is intrinsic to your being. It is the very nature of your consciousness. When you align your beliefs with the highest truths of the universe, you become a co-creator with the divine shaping your life in accordance with the will of your soul and the cosmic order. This is the essence of true magic, the ability to manifest from the depths of your own divine nature. The pages ahead will teach you how to awaken to this power, to harness it, and to use it with wisdom and intention. The journey of self-mastery is not always easy, but it is infinitely rewarding. In reclaiming the divine power of belief, you will not only transform your external circumstances but also ascend to higher levels of consciousness, deepening your connection to the divine and fulfilling the purpose of your soul. Let this book serve as your guide, as you step into the realization that you are not separate from the creative force of the universe, you are it. The Mystical Power of Belief Belief, in its purest form, is the essence of creation, a force more powerful than any material structure or physical law. In the vast expanse of the cosmos, where stars are born from dust and universes spiral through the void, belief stands as the hidden architect. The ancient hermetic principle of mentalism, which declares that all is mind, tells us that reality itself is mental in nature, shaped and sustained by thought. From this perspective, Belief is not simply an internal conviction but a cosmic force, an active agent of manifestation that we wield, whether knowingly or not. Each belief we hold vibrates through the invisible realms, calling into existence the circumstances of our lives. Gnostic teachings delve deeper into the mystery of belief, introducing us to the concept of Gnosis, or direct, experiential knowledge of the divine. Gnosis is not the result of external learning, but the awakening of a deep-seated memory within the soul. It is the understanding that beyond the illusions of the material world lies a hidden reality, where all beings are connected to the divine source. The Gnostics taught that the material world, created by the Demiurge, is an illusion meant to keep humanity trapped in ignorance. Only through Gnosis, the inner realization of one's divinity, can we break free from this illusion? Belief, when grounded in Gnosis, 
becomes a powerful tool for transcending the limitations of the physical world and reclaiming our birthright as divine creators. One modern mystic who echoed these ancient truths is Neville Goddard, whose teachings on the power of imagination and belief have transformed countless lives. Goddard taught that imagination is not a passive daydream but the very act of creation itself. According to him, imagination is God, and when we use our imagination with belief, we are engaging in the divine act of creation. Goddard's central message is that the subconscious mind is the creative force behind all manifestation, and it responds only to what we believe to be true. Through the power of belief, we imprint our desires upon the subconscious, which then orchestrates the events, circumstances, and people needed to bring those desires into reality. In this sense, belief becomes the language through which we communicate with the creative powers of the universe. The law of attraction, which has roots in both hermetic and modern metaphysical teachings, builds upon this understanding. It states that like attracts like, and that the vibrational frequency of our beliefs determines the experiences we attract. When we believe in abundance, success, and love, we emit a frequency that resonates with these experiences, drawing them toward us. Conversely, when we harbor beliefs of lack, fear, or unworthiness, we attract experiences that confirm these beliefs. This law is impersonal and unwavering, it reflects back to us the state of our inner world without judgment. Therefore, mastering the power of belief is essential not only for manifesting our desires but for shaping the very fabric of our reality. To begin harnessing the mystical power of belief, we must first become aware of the beliefs we currently hold. Are they rooted in truth, or do they arise from fear and illusion? What stories do we tell ourselves about who we are and what is possible for us? By shining the light of awareness on these beliefs, we can begin to see which ones serve our highest good and which ones limit our potential. Once we have identified the limiting beliefs, we can engage in the process of mental alchemy, transmuting base thoughts into golden realizations of our divine power. Through daily practices of meditation, visualization, and affirmation, we can align our beliefs with the highest truths of the universe, unlocking the full potential of our creative power. In the silence of meditation, visualize the life you wish to create, seeing it with vivid detail and feeling the emotions of living it. As you do, affirm to yourself that this vision is not merely a wish or fantasy, but a reality that is already being born within you. Repeat powerful affirmations that affirm your divine ability to manifest your dreams. I am a creator. I am worthy of my desires. What I believe, I manifest. Over time, these affirmations will take root in your subconscious mind, and as the Hermetic teachings assure us, the outer world must follow the patterns we set within. By mastering the art of belief, you begin to shape your destiny with conscious intent, turning dreams into reality and stepping fully into your role as a co-creator with the Divine. The Divine Blueprint You are the architect of reality. In the vast cosmic order, where the stars trace ancient paths and the universe breathes in patterns of sacred geometry, each of us is more than a mere spectator. We are architects crafting reality not only with our hands but with the very essence of our minds. To understand this truth is to comprehend one of the deepest mysteries in esoteric traditions, the universe responds to the architect's blueprint, and we are all, consciously or unconsciously, holding the pen. Gnostic teachings describe this cosmic design as the pleroma, the fullness of divine potential, a reservoir of pure creative power from which all forms emerge. Within each of us lies a fragment of this divine fullness, and when awakened, it gives rise to our ability to shape reality according to the patterns of our thoughts, beliefs, and intentions. The Rosicrucians, with their profound understanding of cosmic laws and the interplay between spirit and matter, teach that thoughts are not ephemeral, inconsequential musings. Rather, they are potent forces that crystallize into reality over time. 
Every thought we think, consciously or otherwise, contributes to the construction of our personal universe. Rosicrucians speak of thought forms, energetic constructs that exist within the mental plane, awaiting their manifestation in the physical world. These thought forms are the raw material from which reality is shaped. Like an architect sketching blueprints, every moment we spend thinking and imagining, we are drafting the structure of the life we experience. To truly grasp the power of this divine blueprint, we must first understand the interplay between the mind and the outer world. The Hermetic Principle, as above, so below, encapsulates this mystical truth. What we perceive in the outer world is a reflection of the inner world, our thoughts, emotions, and deeply held beliefs. The microcosm of our mind mirrors the macrocosm of the universe, and as we align our inner thoughts with our highest aspirations, the universe mirrors that alignment back to us. The invisible constructs of the mind, our beliefs, our desires, our fears, shape the visible experiences of our everyday lives. Therefore, mastering our inner world becomes the key to mastering the external world. But herein lies the paradox. While we are architects of our reality, most of us remain unaware of the blueprints we are following. We may believe that life is something that happens to us, shaped by external forces beyond our control. Yet, esoteric wisdom, especially from Gnostic and Hermetic traditions, reveals a deeper truth. The material world, often seen as a dense, unchangeable reality, is actually fluid, shaped by the divine intelligence that flows through all things. To live unconsciously is to surrender this divine power, allowing fear, doubt, and societal conditioning to shape our experiences. It is only through awakening, through conscious recognition of our role as creators, that we reclaim our inherent power to shape reality. To engage fully as the architects of our lives, we must cultivate a deep awareness of our thoughts and beliefs. Journaling becomes a sacred practice in this endeavor, a way to map out the mental blueprints that guide our experience. In this reflective exercise, we bring to light the subconscious patterns that dictate our actions and outcomes. As we write, we ask ourselves, what do I believe about my potential? What are the hidden scripts that govern my reality? This process of inquiry is akin to the alchemical stage of solutio, the dissolving of rigid mental structures that no longer serve us, making way for a new blueprint to emerge. Once we have identified the mental and emotional blueprints that have shaped our lives up until now, we can begin the sacred work of redesigning them. This is the esoteric practice of conscious creation, choosing, with intention and clarity, the thoughts and beliefs that will shape our future. Visualization becomes a powerful tool in this process. Just as an architect visualizes the structure of a building before it is built, so too must we visualize the reality we wish to create. As we sit in meditation, we see in our mind's eye the life we are constructing, imagining every detail with vivid clarity. We feel the emotions of living this reality, as though it has already come to pass, and we align our thoughts with this new blueprint, allowing it to take root in the deeper layers of the mind. By consciously crafting our thoughts and beliefs, we activate the divine potential within us, drawing upon the infinite resources of the Pleroma to bring our vision into physical form. It is not enough to wish or hope for change we must understand that the power to create lies within us. Through belief, thought, and intentional action, we become the architects of our destiny, shaping reality in accordance with our highest aspirations. In this sacred work, we are not separate from the divine. We are co-creators with it, wielding the power of creation through the mental and spiritual tools we have been given. Unveiling the Illusion of Separation from the moment we awaken into this material world, we are taught that separation is the natural order of things. We are told that we are individuals, distinct and apart from one another, navigating a universe that exists outside of us, indifferent and unchanging. Yet, for those who have walked the path of esoteric wisdom, 
This belief is understood as one of the greatest illusions, an illusion fostered by the Demiurge, as the Gnostics taught. This entity, a false creator that governs the material realm, seeks to bind the soul in ignorance, convincing it that the world of matter is all there is. But behind this veil of separation lies a profound truth. We are not separate from the divine, from one another, or from the universe itself. We are, in fact, part of the divine fabric, connected by threads of consciousness that weave through all of existence. To begin unraveling the illusion of separation, we must first understand how it manifests within the mind. Gnostic teachings suggest that the material world, with all its distractions, serves as a trap for the soul, keeping it bound to the sensory experiences of the flesh. The Demiurge and its Archons are said to feed this illusion, creating barriers between the soul and its true source. These barriers manifest as fear, doubt, and the belief that we are isolated beings. Yet, within each of us, there is a divine spark, a fragment of the infinite, untouched by the material world's limitations. This spark is our true self, our connection to the divine source, the pleroma, the fullness of all that is. When we recognize and cultivate this inner light, we begin to see through the illusion, understanding that we are not separate from the divine but expressions of it. The teachings of non-duality, found in both Eastern mysticism and Western esotericism, further illustrate this concept. Advaita Vedanta, for instance, speaks of Brahman, the ultimate reality, and how all forms are mere expressions of this singular divine presence. What we perceive as individual identity is nothing more than the play of Maya, the illusion that veils the truth of unity. In Hermeticism, this same principle is expressed through the concept of the one thing, from which all things arise and to which all things return. The belief in separation, then, is a misperception of reality, a misalignment of our consciousness with the divine order. When we grasp the truth of unity, we free ourselves from the chains of separation, realizing that to harm another is to harm ourselves, and to uplift another is to uplift our own soul. It is essential to recognize that the illusion of separation is not just a philosophical idea but a deeply ingrained mental and emotional state. The ego, as understood in both Gnostic and Eastern teachings, thrives on the belief in separation. It reinforces the idea that we are distinct, fragile beings in constant need of protection, validation, and fulfillment from external sources. The ego fears dissolution because its very existence depends on the illusion of individuality. Yet, the ego is not our true self. It is the mask we wear in the material world, a construct that serves a purpose but must be transcended if we are to experience the fullness of our divine nature. The spiritual path requires that we slowly peel away the layers of egoic identity, uncovering the infinite, eternal self that exists beyond these temporary roles. To transcend the illusion of separation, one must engage in practices that dissolve the ego and align the self with higher consciousness. Meditation becomes a powerful tool in this process, particularly practices that focus on dissolving the boundaries between self and the universe. A simple yet profound meditation is to sit in silence, allowing the breath to become the focal point. As you breathe in, imagine drawing in the energy of the universe, the stars, the earth, the oceans, and all living beings. As you exhale, Imagine sending your own energy back out, merging with the cosmos. With each breath, feel the boundaries of your physical form dissolve, until there is no distinction between where you end and the universe begins. In this state of expanded awareness, you come to know, not just intellectually but experientially, that you are part of the whole, a vital expression of the divine. As we deepen our understanding of unity, we also begin to see how our thoughts, actions, and intentions ripple through the web of existence. The hermetic law of correspondence, as above, so below, as within, so without, reminds us that the external world reflects our internal state. 
If we believe in separation, we will experience a world divided. Conflict, isolation, and fear will dominate our reality. But if we recognize the truth of unity, we will experience a world of harmony, connection, and divine order. This shift in perception is not merely theoretical. It changes the very fabric of our lives. As we align our thoughts with unity, we begin to act from a place of love, compassion, and understanding, transforming not only our own experience but the world around us. Ultimately, the journey of unveiling the illusion of separation is a return to our true nature. It is the process of remembering that we are divine beings, interconnected with all of existence. As we shed the layers of ego and embrace the truth of unity, we awaken to a higher state of consciousness, one in which we are both creators and participants in the grand cosmic dance. In this state, we no longer seek validation, power, or fulfillment from external sources, for we understand that everything we need is already within us, and that we are, and always have been, one with the divine. The Law of Correspondence and Its Role in Manifestation To understand the divine mechanics of creation, one must first grasp the profound truth that the universe mirrors itself in infinite layers. This is the essence of the Hermetic Law of Correspondence, which teaches, as above, so below, as within, so without. This ancient axiom, passed down through esoteric schools of wisdom, reveals that all realms of existence are interconnected, reflecting each other in perfect harmony. What transpires in the heavens is echoed upon the earth, and what exists within the soul is mirrored in the world of form. The mystic understands that reality, whether in the vastness of the cosmos or the depth of the human mind, operates by these same fundamental principles. To create change in one layer of existence is to influence all others. Therefore, to master this law is to wield the very power of creation itself. The law of correspondence illuminates the path of manifestation, for it teaches that everything that exists in the physical world begins as a seed within the mind. Our thoughts and emotions are not passive states but active forces that shape our reality. In the Rosicrucian tradition, it is said that the material world is the shadow or reflection of the spiritual realms. When we shift our inner world, our beliefs, emotions, and intentions, the external world must respond in kind. Just as a stone cast into a still pond creates ripples that extend outward, so too do our thoughts and emotions send vibrations through the fabric of reality, altering the world around us. The universe does not exist in isolation from our consciousness, rather, it is shaped and molded by it. Esoteric teachings also emphasize the fractal nature of existence. Every part contains the whole, and the whole is reflected in every part. This is why the macrocosm and the microcosm are said to be mirrors of each other. Consider the vastness of the stars and planets. They move in grand cycles, governed by cosmic laws, yet within each of us, those same cycles are mirrored. The human body, mind, and spirit are microcosms of the greater universe, containing within them the same forces and energies that govern the cosmos. Through this understanding, the adept learns that to influence the heavens, one must first attune the self. Spiritual alchemy is, at its heart, the transmutation of the inner world to bring about transformation in the outer. The Gnostic tradition, which views the material world as an emanation from the spiritual, offers further insight into the law of correspondence. In the Gnostic view, the soul has descended into the world of matter but retains within it the divine spark, a fragment of the pleroma, the fullness of the divine. This spark connects the soul to the higher realms, allowing it to reflect the divine in the material. To live in alignment with the divine plan is to recognize that the external world is not separate from the soul's internal state but a reflection of it. Gnosticism teaches that the path to liberation is to awaken to this correspondence, to see the divine in all things, and to transform the material world by embodying the divine light within. 
To apply the law of correspondence to manifestation, one must begin by aligning the inner self with the desired outcome. This requires more than simply wishing for change. It demands that we become the change we seek. Every thought we hold, every emotion we nurture, must be in harmony with the reality we wish to create. If we desire abundance, we must cultivate a mindset of abundance, seeing wealth and prosperity within ourselves before it can manifest externally. If we seek love, we must embody love, nurturing it in our hearts and minds until it overflows into our outer reality. In this way, the inner becomes the outer, and the microcosm shapes the macrocosm. The practical application of this principle can be experienced through visualization techniques rooted in hermetic tradition. Begin by entering a state of deep meditation, quieting the mind until it reflects the stillness of the cosmos. In this state, focus on the reality you wish to create. Visualize it in vivid detail, feeling it as if it already exists within you. See yourself living in alignment with this desired outcome allowing your emotions to resonate with the joy, peace, or fulfillment it brings. Hold this image in your mind until it becomes a living reality within your consciousness. In doing so, you send ripples through the fabric of existence, calling forth the forces necessary to bring this vision into the material world. As you practice this art of correspondence, you will begin to see that the universe is not something that happens to you but something that happens through you. You are not a passive observer of reality. You are a co-creator, constantly shaping and molding your world through the power of your inner state. The law of correspondence reminds us that the divine is not something outside of us, distant and unreachable. The divine is reflected in every thought, every emotion, every action. As we cultivate higher states of consciousness within, we elevate the world around us, bringing it into alignment with the divine harmony that underpins all creation. In mastering this law, we step into our true power as creators of our reality. The universe, in all its complexity, becomes our mirror, reflecting back the thoughts, emotions, and beliefs we hold within. Through this sacred understanding, we transcend the illusion of separation and reclaim our role as divine beings, capable of shaping both the inner and outer worlds. To know this is to walk the path of the adept, to see the universe as a living, breathing reflection of our own consciousness. As above, so below. As within, so without. Accessing the higher mind. In the vast expanses of mystical knowledge, the concept of the higher mind is revered as the gateway to divine understanding and spiritual mastery. The higher mind, as described in esoteric traditions, is the luminous bridge between the individual consciousness and the infinite wisdom of the cosmos. It is through this bridge that we access the divine source of all creation, rising beyond the confines of the rational mind into the boundless realms of superconscious awareness. The teachings of Rosicrucians, Gnostics, and Hermetic scholars point to the higher mind as the seat of true knowledge the wellspring of intuition, insight, and creative power. To connect with this sacred aspect of ourselves is to unlock the door to limitless potential, for it is within the higher mind that the mysteries of the universe are unveiled. The rational mind, with its logic and reasoning, serves a vital purpose in navigating the physical world. It is the tool with which we discern, analyze, and categorize our experiences. However, the rational mind is limited by the constraints of the material world, often bound by linear thought and the five senses. In contrast, the higher mind transcends these limitations, offering access to realms of knowledge and experience that exist beyond the material plane. It operates not through logic, but through intuition, an inner knowing that arises from the soul's connection to the divine. This is the mind of the mystic, the poet, the artist, and the seer, those who draw their wisdom from the unseen, who perceive truths that cannot be grasped by the intellect alone. In Rosicrucian thought, the higher mind is linked to the concept of illumination. 
To access this aspect of the self is to experience a kind of inner light, a revelation that comes not from external sources but from within. The Rosicrucians teach that every individual possesses the ability to connect with this inner illumination, but the path requires dedication and discipline. It is through practices such as meditation, contemplation, and ritual that the higher mind is cultivated. As the initiate journeys inward, the veil of the material world begins to lift, revealing the deeper layers of reality. In this space of heightened awareness, the individual comes into alignment with universal truth, gaining insights that transform both the inner and outer worlds. The Gnostic tradition offers a similar perspective, teaching that the higher mind is the vehicle through which one attains Gnosis, the direct, experiential knowledge of the divine. In Gnosticism, the material world is often seen as a veil, a distraction that keeps the soul from recognizing its true nature. The higher mind, however, is the key to piercing this veil. It allows the seeker to see beyond the illusions of the physical realm, accessing the divine spark that resides within. This is the mind that remembers its origin in the pleroma, the fullness of the divine, and seeks to return to that state of unity. Through the higher mind, the Gnostic initiate transcends the limitations of the ego and the material world, awakening to the reality of their divine essence. To access the higher mind, one must first quiet the noise of the lower mind. The rational mind, with its endless chatter, often drowns out the subtle voice of intuition and inner wisdom. Meditation is one of the most powerful tools for stilling the lower mind and opening the channels of the higher self. In the practice of meditation, the individual learns to observe their thoughts without attachment, allowing the mind to settle into a state of calm and receptivity. It is in this stillness that the voice of the higher mind can be heard. This voice does not speak in words but in impressions, feelings, and visions. It is a direct transmission of knowledge that bypasses the intellect and resonates deeply within the soul. Dreams, too, are a gateway to the higher mind. In the dream state, the rational mind is set aside, and the subconscious comes to the forefront. Here, the higher mind can communicate through symbols and archetypes, offering guidance and insight that may be hidden from the waking consciousness. By paying attention to dreams and learning to interpret their symbolic language, one can access the wisdom of the higher self. Journaling dreams upon waking, and meditating on their meaning, allows the seeker to decode the messages of the higher mind. Over time, this practice strengthens the connection between the conscious self and the superconscious, making it easier to access this wisdom in daily life. Strengthening the connection to the higher mind requires practice and patience, but the rewards are profound. As this connection deepens, the individual begins to operate from a place of heightened awareness, seeing beyond the surface of reality to the underlying truths that shape existence. Intuition becomes sharper, creativity flows effortlessly, and decisions are made with a sense of clarity and purpose. The higher mind is not concerned with the trivialities of the ego or the distractions of the material world. It is aligned with the soul's highest purpose. When we live from this space, we move in harmony with the divine, manifesting our desires with ease and grace. The process of connecting with the higher mind is an act of remembering, remembering who we truly are as divine beings, and reclaiming our inherent power as creators of our reality. Through this sacred connection, we transcend the limitations of the lower mind and align with the infinite wisdom of the universe. The higher mind is the doorway to the divine, and as we step through this doorway, we are greeted with the profound realization that we are not separate from the cosmos, but an integral part of it. In this state of unity, we come to know the truth of our being, that we are the creators of our own reality and that the power to manifest our dreams lies within us. The Occult Laws of Vibration and Attraction In the ancient mysteries, it is said that the universe is not a solid, static reality, but a vast sea of energy in constant motion. Everything vibrates, 
everything moves, and nothing rests. This teaching, rooted in Hermeticism and echoed throughout the esoteric traditions, is encapsulated in the law of vibration. The idea that all things, from the densest material forms to the most ethereal spiritual forces, are composed of vibrating energy is fundamental to understanding the occult nature of creation. When we grasp that the universe is built on vibration, we begin to see how our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs are part of this vibrational fabric, influencing the reality that unfolds before us. The law of vibration states that every thought, feeling, and action generates a frequency, a vibration that ripples through the cosmos, attracting like vibrations in return. This is where the law of attraction comes into play. The law of attraction teaches that the vibrational frequency we emit determines the experiences and circumstances we draw into our lives. This principle, ancient in origin, is found in the hermetic maxim, as within, so without, meaning that the internal vibrations of the mind and soul are mirrored in the external world. To manifest our desires, we must align our internal frequency with the vibration of what we wish to attract. To fully understand these laws, one must first recognize that every state of being, whether physical, mental, or emotional, has a distinct vibrational signature. Joy, for example, carries a high frequency, while fear resonates at a much lower vibration. Thoughts of abundance vibrate differently from thoughts of lack, just as love radiates at a far higher frequency than anger or jealousy. It is not enough to merely think about what one desires, one must become vibrationally aligned with it. In essence, to bring about a specific outcome, we must embody the energetic state that corresponds to that outcome. This is why those who seek wealth but vibrate in a state of lack continue to experience scarcity. There is a dissonance between their internal vibration and the frequency of abundance. The Kabbalion one of the most profound hermetic texts, teaches us that, the differences between manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit, result largely from varying rates of vibration. Therefore, to change one's life circumstances, one must alter their vibrational frequency. The mind, being the most powerful tool we possess, is the medium through which these vibrations can be consciously directed. By controlling the thoughts we entertain and the emotions we cultivate, we control the frequencies we emit. This is the alchemy of thought, the transmutation of base emotions and limiting beliefs into higher states of consciousness, allowing us to ascend the vibrational ladder toward the life we wish to create. Raising one's vibration is a process of refinement, akin to the alchemical transformation of lead into gold. Just as the alchemist purifies the base material through fire, we purify our energetic state by shedding fear, doubt, and negativity. This is done through practices that elevate the mind and spirit, such as meditation, breathwork, and the conscious cultivation of positive emotions. In meditation, one quiets the lower mind, allowing the higher mind to take hold, raising the vibrational frequency of the entire being. Through breathwork, we align our energy with the flow of the cosmos, tuning our internal frequency to higher states of consciousness. In choosing love, gratitude, and compassion, we naturally raise our vibration, aligning with the frequencies of the divine. Sound is another potent tool for shifting vibrations, as all sound is vibration in motion. In esoteric traditions, the use of sacred sounds, chants, and mantras has long been recognized as a method for raising one's frequency. The ancient Egyptians, for instance, used the sound of specific tones to attune themselves to the divine, while the Eastern traditions of mantra chanting continue to offer a direct path to aligning with higher frequencies. When we vocalize sacred sounds, we resonate with the harmonic frequencies of the universe, opening ourselves to divine energy and shifting our internal vibration to match our desired state. One of the most accessible ways to begin aligning with the higher vibrations is through the practice of gratitude. Gratitude, like love, 
is a high-frequency emotion that has the power to elevate the entire energetic field of the individual. When we focus on what we are grateful for, we shift our attention away from what we lack, moving out of a vibrational state of scarcity and into one of abundance. This simple shift in focus can have profound effects, as it realigns our internal frequency with the energies of abundance, love, and prosperity, inviting more of the same into our lives. The more we dwell in gratitude, the more we magnetize blessings and opportunities into our reality. Yet, the path of vibrational alignment requires vigilance. Negative thoughts and emotions will inevitably arise, but the key lies in not attaching to them. The lower mind, governed by the ego, often seeks to pull us down into frequencies of fear, doubt, and judgment. It is in these moments that the spiritual warrior must remain steadfast, consciously choosing to transmute these lower vibrations into higher ones. This is the practice of mental alchemy, transforming the lead of negative emotions into the gold of elevated consciousness. Through awareness and discipline, we reclaim our power to shape our vibration and, by extension, our reality. In mastering the laws of vibration and attraction, we come to understand that we are not victims of circumstance but creators of our experience. Every thought, every emotion, every belief is a signal we send out into the universe, and the universe responds in kind, matching us vibration for vibration. This is the essence of the Hermetic teaching, as above, so below, as within, so without. As we raise our internal frequency, we transform the external world to reflect the divine harmony within. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, will always mirror back to us the vibrational state we embody. To change our world, we need only change our vibration. The Alchemy of the Mind In the quiet recesses of the ancient alchemical laboratories, the transmutation of base metals into gold was but a reflection of a greater spiritual quest, the transformation of the human mind and soul. Alchemists, through their cryptic symbols and hidden processes, sought to reveal the profound truth that the real work was not the transformation of lead into gold, but of the leaden thoughts of the lower mind into the golden light of divine wisdom. This process, known as the alchemy of the mind, is an inner journey that leads to the refinement of consciousness, where negative, limiting thoughts are purified, and the mind is uplifted to align with the higher self. At the heart of this transformation lies the ancient hermetic principle of mentalism, which declares, the all is mind, the universe is mental. This fundamental law teaches that all things, all experiences, and all realities are first created in the mind. The mind is the architect of our reality, shaping the world through the thoughts we hold and the beliefs we cultivate. Just as an alchemist would labor over his furnace, refining and purifying the base materials, so too must we labor over our thoughts, refining them to vibrate in harmony with the divine. This is the essence of mental alchemy, the conscious transmutation of lower thought forms into higher states of awareness and creative power. To begin the work of mental alchemy, one must first become aware of the raw material of thought. Like lead, negative or limiting beliefs are dense, heavy, and dull, weighing down the spirit and clouding the mind. These base thoughts are often rooted in fear, doubt, or insecurity, energies that vibrate at a lower frequency and create disharmony both within and in the external world. The key to transmutation lies in acknowledging these lower states without judgment, understanding that they are merely the starting point. As the alchemist begins with crude, unrefined matter, so too must we begin with the unrefined thoughts that arise from our conditioned mind. The first step in transforming these lower thoughts is purification, a process akin to the alchemical stage of calcination, where impurities are burned away in the crucible of awareness. In mental alchemy, this involves recognizing limiting beliefs for what they are, false constructs created by the ego. Thoughts such as, I am not enough, I cannot succeed, or, I am unworthy, are nothing more than illusions, 
yet they hold immense power if left unchecked. Through mindfulness and self-inquiry, we shine the light of higher consciousness upon these thoughts, dissolving their hold over us. This act of conscious awareness is the alchemical fire that purifies the mind, clearing the way for higher thoughts to emerge. Once the impurities of the mind have been identified and dissolved, the next phase is the transmutation itself, transforming base thoughts into gold. This is where the power of intention and focused thought comes into play. Just as the alchemist must visualize the pure gold emerging from his efforts, so must we visualize the highest version of ourselves, the divine self that is free from limitation. Through the practice of affirmation, visualization, and focused intention, we align our mind with the vibrational frequency of higher consciousness. Each time we replace a limiting belief with an empowering thought, we are performing the sacred act of mental transmutation, bringing ourselves closer to the realization of our true, divine nature. But the alchemy of the mind does not end with the individual. The final phase of this transformative process is known as rubedo, the reddening, where the purified and perfected essence of the self is made manifest in the external world. This is the stage where thought becomes reality, where the gold of the inner mind is reflected in the outer world. In this stage, the alchemist becomes a creator, consciously shaping his or her reality in accordance with divine will. When we have transmuted our thoughts, aligned them with the higher self, and maintained that alignment through consistent practice, we begin to witness the outer world transforming to match our inner state. Opportunities align, challenges dissolve, and the path toward our desires becomes clear. The power of mental alchemy lies in its simplicity. It requires no complex rituals, no external tools, and no intermediary forces. It is an internal process, accessible to all who are willing to engage in the great work of the mind. Yet, this simplicity belies its profound impact. For when the mind is purified and aligned with the divine, there is no limit to what can be achieved. As the Hermetic Masters taught, the universe is mental, and those who master their own mind can master the universe itself. This is the secret of the ages, whispered through the halls of the mystery schools and encoded in the sacred texts of the alchemists. In modern terms, the alchemy of the mind can be likened to the practice of rewiring neural pathways, a concept that science is only beginning to understand. The brain, like the universe, is plastic and moldable. Each time we consciously choose to think a higher thought, to affirm our divinity, or to visualize our desires, we are carving new neural pathways, strengthening the connections between our conscious mind and the divine source of all creation. Over time, these new patterns of thought become our default state, and we begin to vibrate at the frequency of our highest potential. This is the true alchemy, the transformation of the mind from a tool of limitation into a vessel of infinite possibility. The journey of mental alchemy is a lifelong process, an ongoing refinement of the self as we ascend toward higher states of consciousness. Like the ancient alchemists, we must approach this work with patience, dedication, and an unwavering belief in the power of transformation. Each thought is a step on the path, each belief a rung on the ladder of ascent. And as we climb, we come to understand that the true gold we seek is not an external prize, but the radiant, divine essence that has always existed within. Through the alchemy of the mind, we unlock this essence, and in doing so, we discover that we are, and always have been, the creators of our reality. Gnostic Teachings on Inner Power In the depths of ancient Gnostic thought lies the profound understanding that the true source of power resides not in the external world, but deep within the soul of each individual. The Gnostics taught that hidden within every human being is a divine spark, a fragment of the ineffable and eternal source, which connects us to the infinite power of creation. This inner light, often obscured by the illusions of the material world, holds the key to self-mastery and ultimate liberation. To access this power, 
one must transcend the layers of ego, false beliefs, and external conditioning that keep the soul bound to the illusions of the demiurgic realm. Only through inner revelation, or Gnosis, can one awaken to their divine nature and reclaim their inherent power. The Gnostic path begins with the recognition of the false self, the constructed identity shaped by societal norms, material desires, and the illusions of separation. This false self, often referred to as the ego, is rooted in fear, scarcity, and limitation. It is the voice that says, I am separate from the divine, and, I must seek power outside of myself. According to Gnostic teachings, the more we cling to this false self, the more we distance ourselves from our true, divine essence. The ego thrives on external validation and material attachments, keeping us in a perpetual state of reaction to the outer world. But true power, the Gnostics remind us, is not found in the fleeting illusions of external success or control. It is discovered through the inner journey, through the realization that the kingdom of God is within. To awaken to this inner power, one must undergo a process of inner purification, a shedding of the layers of the false self to reveal the divine spark within. This process, often symbolized in Gnostic texts as a descent into the underworld or a journey through darkness, is not without its challenges. It requires confronting the shadows of the subconscious mind, the repressed fears and doubts that have long been buried beneath the surface. Yet, it is only by facing these shadows that one can dissolve them, allowing the light of the divine to shine forth. The Gnostics saw this as the ultimate alchemical transformation, the transmutation of ignorance into knowledge, of fear into love, of separation into unity. Once the false self has been dissolved, the soul begins to align with the higher self, the true essence that is one with the divine. In this state of Gnosis, the individual no longer seeks power from the external world, for they have realized that they are the source of power. The divine spark within them is a direct extension of the infinite source, and through this connection, they can manifest their highest potential. Gnosis is not merely an intellectual understanding, it is an experiential knowing, a direct communion with the divine. In this state, the individual transcends the limitations of the physical world and becomes a conscious co-creator with the universe, shaping their reality through the power of their inner light. The path to reclaiming this inner power is one of deep introspection and spiritual discipline. It requires a commitment to turning inward, to seeking knowledge not from external sources, but from the still, quiet voice of the higher self. The Gnostics often spoke of the importance of silence and contemplation in this process, for it is in the silence that the true nature of the self is revealed. Through practices such as meditation, prayer, and self-inquiry, one can pierce through the veil of illusion and access the wisdom of the higher realms. The more one tunes into this inner wisdom, the more they begin to see that the power they once sought in the external world has always been within them. This inner power is not the aggressive, dominating force that the material world often associates with strength. Instead, it is a subtle, yet unshakable presence, a quiet confidence that comes from knowing one's divine nature. It is the power of alignment, where one's thoughts, words, and actions are in harmony with the highest good. This power is magnetic, drawing opportunities, relationships, and experiences that resonate with the soul's true purpose. It is not about controlling or manipulating the external world, but about becoming a vessel through which divine will can manifest. When one is aligned with their inner power, they become a channel for the flow of divine energy, effortlessly creating and attracting abundance in all forms. The Gnostic path to inner power is a path of liberation. It is the realization that we are not victims of circumstance, nor are we bound by the limitations of the material world. We are creators, endowed with the same creative force that brought the universe into existence. When we awaken to this truth, we transcend the false belief that we must struggle or fight for power. Instead, we realize that power is our natural state of being 
a reflection of our divine essence. As we cultivate this inner power, we step into our role as conscious co-creators, shaping our reality with intention, clarity, and love. In practical terms, reclaiming this inner power begins with the practice of self-reflection and inner inquiry. Each day, take time to sit in stillness and connect with the deeper aspects of your being. Ask yourself, what false beliefs or fears are keeping me from realizing my true power? What external attachments am I clinging to that are rooted in the illusion of separation? As you ask these questions, allow the answers to arise from within. Trust the wisdom of your higher self, for it is always guiding you toward the realization of your divine nature. As you release the false self and align with the higher self, you will begin to notice a shift in your energy, your thoughts, and your experiences. The more you trust in your inner power, the more it will reveal itself to you, guiding you toward your highest potential. In closing, the Gnostic teachings remind us that the journey to inner power is not about gaining something new, but about rediscovering what has always been within. It is a process of awakening to the truth of our divine nature, of remembering that we are powerful creators capable of shaping our reality through the power of belief. As we cultivate this inner power, we step into our role as divine beings, no longer bound by the limitations of the material world. We become conscious co-creators, living in alignment with the highest truth and manifesting our dreams from the wellspring of divine energy that flows through us. This is the true power of belief, the power to manifest not only our dreams, but the fullness of our divine potential. Mastering the Subconscious Mind for Manifestation The subconscious mind, vast and mysterious, is often described in esoteric teachings as the hidden engine of creation. It is the deep reservoir where thoughts, emotions, and beliefs lie, influencing every aspect of our reality. Unlike the conscious mind, which deals with the immediate and tangible, the subconscious mind operates beyond the surface, silently orchestrating the events and circumstances of our lives. In occult traditions, such as those of the Hermetic and Gnostic schools, the subconscious is regarded as the seat of the soul, the intermediary between the spirit and the material world. To master the art of manifestation, one must first learn to navigate the depths of the subconscious, for it is here that the seeds of reality are sown. The subconscious mind is not passive. It is a powerful force that constantly works to manifest whatever it is programmed to believe. Yet, much of what is stored in the subconscious lies beyond our awareness, shaped by past experiences, societal conditioning, and inherited patterns. These latent beliefs can either work for or against us, depending on how consciously we engage with them. Esoteric teachings emphasize that the subconscious mind does not distinguish between positive or negative, truth or illusion. It simply accepts whatever is imprinted upon it. This is why ancient wisdom traditions emphasize the importance of conscious reprogramming, of deliberately planting the seeds of belief that align with one's highest desires and divine potential. In the teachings of Neville Goddard, a modern mystic deeply influenced by esoteric thought, the subconscious is described as the creative power of the universe itself. According to Goddard, it is the subconscious mind that brings forth whatever is impressed upon it, whether through thought, emotion, or imagination. He likened the subconscious to the fertile soil of the earth. Whatever seed is planted will grow, regardless of whether it is a weed or a flower. Thus, the key to manifestation lies in conscious planting, in being vigilant about what we impress upon the subconscious. To align the subconscious with our dreams, we must first bring our desires into clear focus and then consistently feed the subconscious mind with images, emotions, and thoughts that resonate with those desires. The process of subconscious reprogramming is akin to a ritual of mental alchemy. Just as the alchemist seeks to transmute base metals into gold, so too must we transmute limiting beliefs and habitual thought patterns into higher, empowering states of consciousness. 
One of the most powerful tools for this is visualization. When we visualize with clarity and emotion, we communicate directly with the subconscious, which responds not to words, but to images and feelings. Esoteric traditions teach that the imagination is the bridge between the conscious and subconscious minds. Through vivid imagery, the subconscious receives new instructions, new blueprints for creation. By consistently holding the vision of our desired reality in mind, we begin to impress it upon the subconscious, which in turn shapes our outer experience. Another essential practice for mastering the subconscious is the use of affirmations. In the Hermetic tradition, the spoken word is seen as a vibrational force that shapes reality. When we speak affirmations aloud, particularly those that are aligned with our divine nature, we reinforce new patterns of belief within the subconscious. It is important, however, that affirmations are not just mechanical repetitions. They must be spoken with conviction, infused with emotion, and rooted in the belief that they are already true. As we repeat affirmations, we begin to overwrite old patterns and beliefs, replacing them with thoughts that align with our highest potential. Over time, this consistent practice reprograms the subconscious, allowing it to act as a magnet that attracts experiences in harmony with the new belief system. Beyond visualization and affirmations, rituals play a central role in the process of reprogramming the subconscious mind. In esoteric practices, rituals are designed not only to invoke external forces but to create powerful shifts within the practitioner's internal landscape. A well-crafted ritual can serve as a symbolic gesture that communicates directly with the subconscious, signaling that a new phase of manifestation is about to unfold. Whether it is through lighting candles, drawing sacred symbols, or performing a specific action at a designated time, the act of ritual engages the deeper layers of the mind, embedding the intention more firmly into the subconscious. Rituals provide a sense of sacred structure, allowing the practitioner to align both mentally and energetically with their desired outcome. One of the most profound ways to access the subconscious mind is through the state of sleep. Esoteric traditions, particularly those found in the teachings of Gnosticism and Hermeticism, view sleep as a gateway to the deeper realms of the subconscious. In the moments just before falling asleep, known as the hypnagogic state, the mind is highly receptive to suggestion. This is the time when the conscious mind begins to recede, allowing the subconscious to become more accessible. In this state, one can consciously impress their desires onto the subconscious through visualization and affirmations. By doing so, they plant seeds of intention in the fertile soil of the subconscious, which will take root and grow during the night. Mastering the subconscious mind is not merely about achieving external success, it is about reclaiming one's divine power as a conscious creator. In the esoteric tradition, the subconscious is often referred to as the soul's memory, the storehouse of all knowledge, experience, and potential. To align with this deeper aspect of the self is to step into a greater realm of spiritual authority, where manifestation becomes a natural extension of one's being. The subconscious is not an enemy to be controlled, but a powerful ally to be harmonized with. When we learn to direct its energy with intention and awareness, we unlock the ability to create not only the life we desire but also the soul's true destiny. In conclusion, the art of mastering the subconscious mind is both a spiritual practice and a practical tool for manifestation. It requires a deep level of self-awareness, a commitment to mental discipline, and a willingness to engage with the deeper layers of the psyche. As we become conscious of the beliefs and patterns that reside within our subconscious, we gain the power to reshape them in alignment with our highest visions. Through the practices of visualization, affirmation, ritual, and introspection, we can reprogram the subconscious to act in harmony with our desires. This mastery of the subconscious is not merely a skill to be learned but a profound act of self-realization, for it is through the subconscious that we access the divine creative power within. As we align with this power, 
we step into our role as conscious creators, capable of manifesting not only our dreams but the fullness of our spiritual potential. Esoteric Rituals to Align with Cosmic Laws Rituals, in their most sacred form, are acts of conscious alignment with the cosmic forces that govern the universe. Esoteric traditions throughout the ages, from ancient Egyptian rites to the mystical practices of the Rosicrucians, have long understood the power of ritual as a means of connecting with the divine. When performed with intention and awareness, rituals serve as symbolic gateways, allowing the practitioner to commune with higher realms and synchronize their personal energy with the universal laws. The purpose of a ritual is not to manipulate external forces but to create harmony between the inner and outer worlds, to align the microcosm of the self with the macrocosm of the cosmos. The foundation of any esoteric ritual lies in the understanding of symbolism. In occult teachings, symbols are far more than mere representations, they are living entities that carry specific vibrations and energies. Whether it is the use of sacred geometry, planetary sigils, or alchemical symbols, the careful selection of these tools in ritual practice helps to anchor the practitioner's intention within the fabric of the universe. The ancient hermetic principle of correspondence, as above, so below, reminds us that symbols resonate with universal forces, acting as keys that unlock the deeper mysteries of creation. Through ritual, we engage with these symbols to bring about change, both within ourselves and in the world around us. In Rosicrucian and Gnostic traditions, ritual is not seen as a performance but as a sacred act of remembrance, an invocation of the divine essence that already resides within. Rituals are designed to awaken the practitioner to their innate connection with the cosmos, reminding them that they are not separate from the forces they seek to invoke. For example, a simple candle lighting ritual can become a powerful tool for aligning with the element of fire, symbolizing the illumination of the soul and the burning away of impurities. When performed with conscious intention, even the most basic actions become charged with spiritual significance, creating a bridge between the physical and metaphysical worlds. One of the most potent aspects of ritual is its ability to engage the subconscious mind, which, as discussed in the previous chapter, plays a critical role in manifestation. Rituals work by bypassing the analytical mind, directly communicating with the deeper layers of the psyche through symbols, repetition, and sensory engagement. The use of incense, specific colors, sacred sounds, and movements are all designed to trigger the subconscious, which responds not to logic but to sensory and symbolic cues. By creating a ritual environment that evokes certain emotions and thoughts, the practitioner plants seeds within the subconscious mind that blossom into real-world manifestations. It is for this reason that rituals, when performed consistently and with focused intent, become a powerful means of reprogramming the subconscious and aligning it with one's highest desires. An important consideration in esoteric ritual practice is the alignment with cosmic timing. Ancient mystics were acutely aware that the forces of the universe move in cycles, governed by planetary movements, lunar phases, and the rhythms of nature. Rituals performed in harmony with these natural cycles are vastly more powerful, as they draw upon the energetic tides that flow through the cosmos. For example, a ritual of release or purification is best performed during the waning moon, when the lunar energy supports the act of letting go and cleansing. Conversely, rituals of manifestation and growth are most potent during the waxing moon or on days ruled by planets that correspond to the practitioner's intention, such as invoking Venus for love or Jupiter for abundance. Understanding and working with these cosmic cycles is an integral part of mastering ritual magic. One such example of a powerful esoteric ritual is the Ritual of Cosmic Alignment, a practice rooted in the teachings of Hermetricism and Rosicrucianism. This ritual is designed to align the practitioner's energy with the laws of the cosmos, facilitating harmony between personal intention and universal forces. The ritual begins by creating a sacred space, a symbolic circle that represents the unity of the universe. 
The practitioner may use candles to represent the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. As each candle is lit, the practitioner invokes the energy of that element, calling upon it to assist in the alignment of their mind, body, and spirit with the natural forces of creation. The use of sacred geometry, such as drawing a pentagram or placing a crystal in the center of the space, serves to anchor the ritual in the harmonic patterns of the universe. Once the space is prepared, the practitioner engages in a meditative visualization, imagining themselves as a conduit for divine energy. In this state, they affirm their connection to the universal mind, speaking aloud or silently affirmations of alignment, such as, I am one with the rhythm of the universe. I align my thoughts and actions with the laws of creation. As these words are spoken, the practitioner visualizes a stream of golden light descending from the cosmos into their body, filling them with the energy of divine alignment. This light is seen as flowing through the practitioner, clearing any blockages and raising their vibration to match the frequency of their desired manifestation. The final stage of the ritual involves an act of gratitude. In esoteric practice, Gratitude is not merely a polite acknowledgement but a powerful vibrational tool that magnetizes higher energies toward the practitioner. By expressing sincere gratitude for the alignment that has been achieved, the practitioner solidifies the connection between their inner intention and the outer universe. The ritual is then closed by thanking the elements and extinguishing the candles in reverse order, symbolizing the return of the energies to their rightful places within the cosmos. It is important to note that ritual work is not about controlling the universe or forcing outcomes. True esoteric wisdom teaches that rituals are about aligning oneself with the natural flow of cosmic forces, becoming a vessel through which the divine can express itself. When performed with humility, reverence, and clear intention, rituals become sacred acts of co-creation with the universe. They remind the practitioner that they are both the creator and the created, an integral part of the cosmic dance. Through the power of ritual, one learns to move with the rhythms of the universe, trusting that their desires will manifest in perfect harmony with the divine plan. Mastering the art of esoteric ritual requires patience, practice, and a deep connection to the spiritual principles that govern the universe. It is not enough to mechanically perform rituals. They must be infused with genuine intention, emotion, and understanding of the cosmic forces at play. As the practitioner grows in their understanding of the subtle laws that guide creation, they will find that ritual becomes not just an occasional practice, but a way of life, a continuous dialogue with the divine. Through ritual, the individual learns to harness the infinite power of belief, aligning their inner world with the cosmos, and manifesting their dreams with grace and precision. The Sacred Geometry of Thought and Creation In the grand tapestry of the universe, geometry holds the secret patterns that govern the structure of all things. From the smallest atom to the vast expanses of galaxies, sacred geometry reveals the divine blueprint of creation. It is a language beyond words, a harmonic resonance that speaks directly to the soul. In the esoteric traditions, such as those of the Hermeticists and the Rosicrucians, sacred geometry is understood not merely as mathematical shapes, but as the symbolic expression of the divine mind. The circle, the square, the triangle, each of these forms carries within it a universal truth, a reflection of the cosmic laws that shape reality. To understand sacred geometry is to glimpse the architecture of the divine, to see how the formless becomes form through the power of thought and intention. The ancients taught that creation begins with a single point, a point that represents pure potential, the seed of all existence. This point expands into a line, a movement from unity into duality, and from that line, the circle emerges, the first act of creation symbolizing infinity, wholeness, and the eternal return. In esoteric wisdom, the circle is the symbol of the soul, infinite and boundless, connected to both the earthly and the celestial. It is the sacred container within which all things manifest, 
a reminder that we are each a microcosm of the greater cosmos. When we align our thoughts with the patterns of sacred geometry, we tap into this universal blueprint, allowing our creations to flow in harmony with the laws of the universe. One of the most powerful symbols in sacred geometry is the flower of life, a pattern made of interlocking circles that form a complex, yet perfectly harmonious, structure. In this design, the principles of creation are made visible. The flower of life is found in ancient temples, from Egypt to China, and is said to contain the blueprint of all life, the pattern from which the universe unfolds. Esoteric teachings tell us that by meditating on this symbol, we align ourselves with the forces of creation, tuning into the divine frequencies that shape reality. In this way, the flower of life becomes more than just a visual design. It is a key to understanding the relationship between thought and manifestation, revealing how our mental patterns form the fabric of our lives. In Rosicrucian and Hermetic traditions, it is taught that thoughts themselves follow geometric patterns. When we think, we create energetic forms that exist in the unseen realms, much like the intricate designs of sacred geometry. These thought forms, as they are called, carry the energy of our intentions and eventually manifest in the physical world. To become a master of thought, then, is to become a master of creation. Just as an architect carefully designs a building with precise measurements and harmonious proportions, so too must we design our thoughts with clarity and alignment. When we use sacred geometry as a model for our thinking, we create with purpose, ensuring that our mental blueprints are strong, balanced, and aligned with universal principles. One practical way to incorporate sacred geometry into the process of creation is through visualization. By mentally constructing geometric shapes, such as the triangle, the square, or the pentagram, we can bring our thoughts into focus, anchoring them in the powerful forms that the universe recognizes. For example, the triangle, with its three points, represents the triad of creation, the mind, body, and spirit. When visualized with intention, it can help balance and harmonize these aspects of our being, allowing us to create from a place of wholeness. The square, on the other hand, symbolizes stability and foundation, making it a powerful tool for grounding thoughts into the material world. When we mentally place our goals within the framework of a square, we give them structure and support, helping them to manifest with greater ease and solidity. Another potent symbol for manifestation is the tetrahedron, a three-dimensional triangle that represents the element of fire and the energy of transformation. In esoteric teachings, the tetrahedron is used to accelerate the process of creation, as it carries the dynamic energy of movement and change. By visualizing ourselves surrounded by a tetrahedron, we can amplify our personal power, aligning with the transformative forces of the universe. This symbol teaches us that manifestation is not a passive act but an active engagement with the forces of creation. Just as fire transforms whatever it touches, so too does focused thought, charged with emotion and intention, transform the raw energy of potential into tangible reality. Sacred geometry also teaches us that creation is not a linear process but a cyclical one. Like the spirals of the Fibonacci sequence, everything in the universe unfolds in spirals, from the galaxies in the cosmos to the shells of the ocean. This spiral pattern reflects the continuous flow of energy and evolution, reminding us that our creations are never fixed but are always in a state of becoming. By understanding this, we learn that manifestation is an ongoing process, one that requires us to continually refine and evolve our thoughts. Just as the spiral expands outward from a central point, so too must our vision expand as we grow in consciousness. This is the essence of co-creation with the universe, a dance of expansion and contraction, of dreaming and refining, of building and revising. Incorporating sacred geometry into daily spiritual practice can transform the way we manifest our desires.
One such practice involves drawing or meditating on specific geometric shapes that align with our intentions. For example, if one seeks to create greater abundance, the hexagon, a symbol of harmony and balance, often seen in the structure of honeycombs, can be visualized or drawn during meditation. By focusing on the hexagon, we invoke the principle of harmony, aligning our thoughts and actions with the natural flow of abundance in the universe. This practice can be further enhanced by combining the geometric visualization with affirmations or mantras, amplifying the creative power of thought. Ultimately, sacred geometry reminds us that we are not separate from the patterns of creation. We are part of the divine design. Our thoughts are the tools with which we shape our reality, just as the universe shapes the stars, the planets, and the galaxies with its own sacred patterns. When we align our minds with these universal patterns, we become conscious co-creators, able to manifest our dreams with clarity and precision. Through the study and application of sacred geometry, we discover that the same forces that govern the movement of the planets and the growth of trees are at work within us, guiding us toward the fulfillment of our highest potential. In this way, the sacred geometry of thought becomes the sacred geometry of life, revealing the infinite possibilities that await us when we create in harmony with the divine. Overcoming the Demiurge Escaping Limiting Constructs In the mystical teachings of Gnosticism, the Demiurge is depicted as a false god, the architect of the material world who traps souls in a web of illusion and limitation. This ancient figure represents not merely a mythological entity but a profound symbol of the forces that bind us to the false perceptions of reality. The Demiurge, in esoteric wisdom, is the embodiment of the external world's influence, the systems, beliefs, and structures that lead us to forget our divine origins. In this sense, the Demiurge is both an outer and inner force, the external structures of control and the internal constructs of ego and fear that keep us imprisoned. To overcome the Demiurge is to awaken to the truth of our divine nature, to break free from the chains of false constructs that distort our perception of reality. These limiting constructs begin to form early in life, influenced by societal conditioning, cultural norms, and inherited belief systems. As we grow, the illusion of separation from the divine becomes more deeply ingrained, and the ego strengthens its hold. The ego, in many ways, is the demiurge's representative within the individual, constantly reinforcing the illusion that we are separate from the source, powerless, and bound by the material world. Gnosticism teaches that this separation is the greatest illusion of all, for within each of us lies the spark of the divine, a piece of the pleroma, the fullness of the spiritual realm. To escape the constructs of the demiurge is to recognize that this spark exists within us, and that we are far more than the limited identities we have been conditioned to accept. Breaking free from these limitations requires gnosis, inner knowledge. Gnosis is not mere intellectual understanding, but direct, experiential wisdom. It is the awakening to the divine spark within and the realization that we are co-creators of our reality. As we awaken to this truth, the structures of the demiurge begin to crumble. The limitations imposed by society, by our own fears, and by false beliefs lose their power. The key to overcoming the demiurge is to remember that these constructs are not real. They are illusions maintained by the mind. When we step into the awareness of our own divinity, we begin to dissolve the hold these illusions have over us. The walls of the prison fall away, and we stand as liberated beings, free to create our own reality in alignment with the divine. The process of overcoming the demiurge involves recognizing and dismantling the thought patterns and belief systems that keep us bound. These limiting beliefs often manifest as self-doubt, fear of failure, and a sense of powerlessness in the face of life's challenges. The first step in breaking free is to become aware of these beliefs, to shine the light of consciousness on them and see them for what they truly are, constructs of the false self, not reflections of divine truth. 
One effective method of doing this is through self-inquiry, a practice taught by many esoteric traditions. By asking ourselves deep, reflective questions, such as, who am I beyond these thoughts and beliefs, we begin to unravel the layers of illusion that have been built around us. Another powerful practice for overcoming the demiurge is meditation, particularly meditations focused on connecting with the higher self. In esoteric traditions, the higher self is the aspect of us that remains connected to the divine, untouched by the illusions of the material world. By meditating on the higher self, we can bypass the limitations of the ego and the mind, accessing a state of pure awareness. In this state, the constructs of the demiurge dissolve, and we experience our true nature as infinite, eternal beings. Through regular meditation, we strengthen this connection to the higher self, allowing us to live more fully from this place of divine wisdom and power, free from the limitations imposed by the false world. Overcoming the demiurge is not just an intellectual pursuit but a deeply spiritual journey. It requires us to confront the illusions we have accepted as reality and to transcend the lower forces that seek to keep us in bondage. Yet, this journey is also one of empowerment. For in dismantling the constructs of the demiurge, we reclaim our sovereignty. We realize that we are not victims of circumstance, but powerful creators capable of shaping our reality. This realization opens the door to true freedom the freedom to lie from the heart of our divine nature, to manifest our dreams without limitation, and to align ourselves fully with the flow of universal consciousness. In this chapter, we come to understand that the demiurge and its constructs exist not to punish or imprison us, but as challenges that drive us toward awakening. Every limitation we encounter is an opportunity to recognize our inner divinity and transcend the false beliefs that hold us back. Through the practices of self-inquiry, meditation, and conscious awareness, we can dismantle the illusions of the demiurge and rise into the fullness of our being. We are not bound by the false constructs of the material world. We are free, divine creators, capable of manifesting our highest visions through the power of belief and the truth of our inner knowing. The Divine Human Living as the Creator to live as a divine human is to embrace the profound truth that we are creators of our own reality, that the power to shape existence lies within the depths of our consciousness. In the ancient teachings of Gnosticism, Hermeticism, and Rosicrucianism, the human soul is seen not as a passive recipient of the world's circumstances but as an active participant in the divine unfolding of the universe. To awaken to this truth is to step into the role of the Creator, to reclaim the divine spark within, and to manifest a life that is in perfect harmony with the higher cosmic order. This is the ultimate realization of the spiritual seeker, that we are not separate from the divine but, in fact, living embodiments of it, capable of shaping our world through the power of belief and will. In Gnostic teachings, the concept of the divine human, or the pneumatic man, represents the individual who has awakened to their inherent divinity and their oneness with the Source. This state of being transcends the material world and the illusions created by the demiurge. The divine human is one who sees through the veil of illusion, recognizing that the physical world is but a reflection of the inner spiritual realms. This realization brings with it a profound shift in perspective, no longer do we see ourselves as powerless or at the mercy of external forces, but as co-creators with the divine. To live as a divine human is to recognize that the world is not something that happens to us, but something we shape and mold through our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Living as the creator involves not only the recognition of our power but the responsibility that comes with it. In the Hermetic tradition, the principle of, as above, so below, teaches that the microcosm, the individual, mirrors the macrocosm, the universe. This principle implies that the creative power within us is a reflection of the creative power of the divine source. Just as the universe was brought into being through the word, or the divine thought, 
so too do we bring our reality into being through the thoughts we hold and the words we speak. Every thought is a seed, and every word is a command that shapes the unfolding of our personal universe. To live as a divine human, then, is to cultivate a deep awareness of the power of our thoughts and to use that power with intention, wisdom, and love. The Rosicrucians, with their focus on the inner transformation of the soul, teach that the journey to becoming a divine human is one of inner alchemy. This process of spiritual alchemy involves the transmutation of the base elements of the self, fear, doubt, and limitation, into the gold of higher consciousness. It is through the refinement of the mind and heart that we ascend to higher states of being, aligning ourselves with the divine will. In this process, the lower self, bound by ego and material desire, is dissolved, and the higher self emerges as the true essence of our being. The divine human is one who has undergone this alchemical transformation, who has moved beyond the lower states of consciousness and into a harmonious relationship with the divine mind. This transformation is the key to living as the Creator, for only through this process can we access the full potential of our creative power. But what does it mean to live as the Creator in practical terms? It means taking full responsibility for our reality, recognizing that every experience, whether perceived as good or bad, is a reflection of our inner state. The divine human does not blame external circumstances or other people for their experiences, instead, they look within to see how their thoughts, beliefs, and actions have shaped the reality they encounter. This does not mean we are to blame ourselves for negative experiences, but rather that we are empowered to change them by shifting our inner world. By cultivating a deep sense of self-awareness and aligning our thoughts with our highest vision, we can transform our external reality to reflect the beauty, abundance, and love that resides within us. To live as the Creator also means to embrace the role of service. In esoteric traditions, true mastery is never about personal gain or the accumulation of material wealth alone. It is about using one's power to uplift and serve others. The divine human understands that they are a part of the whole, interconnected with all beings and all of creation. As such, their creative power is not used for selfish purposes but to bring harmony, healing, and enlightenment to the world. This is the highest form of creation, to align one's personal will with the divine will, to create in harmony with the universe, and to contribute to the greater good of all. The Rosicrucians speak of this as living in accordance with the divine plan a state of being in which the individual's creations are in perfect alignment with the cosmic order, bringing not only personal fulfillment but also collective benefit. As we conclude this journey of awakening to our divine nature, it is essential to remember that living as the Creator is not a destination but an ongoing process. Every moment offers us the opportunity to create anew, to choose thoughts and actions that align with our highest self and to shape our reality in accordance with the divine. This path of self-mastery is a lifelong journey, one that requires patience, discipline, and a deep commitment to inner growth. Yet, it is also a journey of immense joy and fulfillment, for as we align ourselves with the divine, we experience the profound truth that we are not separate from the source but one with it. To live as the divine human is to embody the creative force of the universe, to manifest our dreams with intention, and to contribute to the unfolding of the divine plan. In this final chapter, we have explored the profound truth of our divine nature and our role as creators of our reality. We are not victims of circumstance but powerful co-creators with the universe, capable of shaping our lives through the power of belief and intention. By embracing this truth, by living as the divine human, we step into our full potential and align ourselves with the highest expression of our being. The journey of self-mastery is one of continuous evolution, of refining our thoughts, expanding our awareness, and living in harmony with the divine. As we walk this path, we are not only manifesting our dreams but contributing to the awakening of the world 
helping to bring about the realization of the divine within all of humanity.